Have you been diagnosed with premature ovarian failure or a low AMH and feel confused about what to do next? If so, you are not alone and this video is meant just for you. Premature ovarian failure affects about 1 in every 100 women and the numbers are constantly rising. Now I understand this diagnosis can feel overwhelming but it's crucial to understand your early signs, your diagnosis and your treatment options because unfortunately time is not on our side especially when it comes to fertility. Now if you're dealing with this condition I want you to stop asking yourself why does this happen to me. Instead you start focusing on what you can do next. Because dwelling on the cause will really not change the situation but taking action now can make a lot of difference. So I make a lot of videos on women's reproductive health and my only goal in this channel is to educate and empower you to make better health decisions for yourself. So if you find such information helpful, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now let's first understand the differences between premature ovarian failure premature ovarian insufficiency and isolated low AMH. Premature ovarian failure or POF is when the eggs are completely depleted which means that natural conception is nearly impossible. On the other hand, premature ovarian insufficiency or POI refers to a condition where some eggs may still be available to retrieve offering a possibility of conception with medical assistance. Now, from my experience, I have observed that women with isolated low AMH levels tend to have lower quality eggs. But since their follicle count is still good, they don't strictly fall under the category of premature ovarian insufficiency or failure. The very early symptoms of premature ovarian failure can be very subtle, which is why it is important to pay attention to any changes in your body. Some of the first symptoms include hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal dry dryness, which are somewhat similar to menopausal symptoms and often they are the earliest signs. If your menstrual cycle suddenly becomes irregular, if you need medications to menstruate or if your period stops altogether, these are all major red flags that should not be ignored. Now to confirm this diagnosis, your doctor will usually recommend series of blood tests. Now these tests measure your hormone levels including FSH also known as follicle stimulating hormone, estradiol and anti-mullerian hormone also known as AMH. A transvaginal ultrasound is also used to assess the ovarian size and follicular count. Additionally, some clinicians also do karyotyping which is done to check for chromosomal abnormalities such as Turner syndrome. Now, high FSH levels and low AMH levels with small ovaries in the ultrasound is a clear sign of premature ovarian failure. In case of premature ovarian insufficiency, the AMH levels might be low but the FSH levels tend to remain fairly normal and they also have fewer follicles which are visible in the ultrasound. Ultrasound. Now, in contrast, women with isolated low AMH will have low AMH levels, but the number of follicles when examined through ultrasound would be normal. The treatment approaches for premature ovarian failure or insufficiency depends on factors such as age, lifestyle, and importantly, your family planning goals. For younger women diagnosed with premature ovarian insufficiency who wish to conceive, fertility preservation methods such as egg freezing should be considered as early as possible. Now, for women who are not currently planning for pregnancy, a Mediterranean diet, regular exercise and lifestyle modifications are very key to maintain overall health. If menopausal symptoms like hot flashes are present, hormone replacement therapy or HRD can be an effective treatment option. For married women or those considering pregnancy in the future, the chances of natural conception with premature ovarian insufficiency are quite low, only at about 4.8%. Now, depending on your age, your doctor may recommend a few cycles of natural conception with superovulation, of course, which helps maximize the number of eggs released during every cycle. And if this approach is not successful, assisted reproductive techniques such as ICSI, also known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection, will likely be the next step. Now, women who are suffering from premature ovarian failure, on the other hand, can only achieve pregnancy through a donor cycle because any kind of hormonal stimulation may not really work for these patients. Now, for women who have isolated low AMH, the situation is far more favorable. And for these women, ART treatments may be considered based on her age and overall fertility goals. Now, I also want to talk about two experimental therapies that are generating a lot of interest in fertility medicine. I am of course talking about stem cell therapy and platelet-rich plasma also known as PRP. Stem cell therapy involves using stem cells sourced from your bone marrow to 
possibly restore ovarian function. Some studies such as the one conducted by Gupta et al. in 2022 suggested that stem cell transplantation can lead to the restoration of menstruation and even pregnancy in some cases. However, it is very important to note that these trials are very limited due to the small sample size and procedural variabilities. Now, in my own case series, I found that two out of eight patients with premature ovarian insufficiency were able to achieve natural pregnancy after undergoing stem cell therapy. Now, PRP therapy on the other hand involves injecting platelet-rich plasma into the ovaries. Now, a study by Swanodus et al. I hope I'm saying this right, in 2018 has shown that this PRP treatment can increase AMH levels and also improve ovarian function. But in my personal opinion, I feel that PRP therapy works best as a complementary treatment to stem cell therapy rather than a standalone approach. Now, if you are interested to learn more about stem cell therapy or PRP for ovarian function, let me know in the comments down below. While all these experimental therapies are still being studied, there are several proactive steps that you can do right now to support your ovarian health. Maintaining a balanced diet rich in antioxidants, exercising regularly and reducing your exposure to environmental toxins can all contribute to better ovarian function. Smoking in particular is a major risk factor for accelerated egg loss. So quitting smoking can make a significant difference in your fertility outcomes. There are also certain supplements such as CoQ10, DHEA, melatonin that are often discussed in the context of improving egg quality. But the scientific evidence on these supplements remain mixed. So it's best that you consult your doctor before starting any of these supplement regimes. See, premature ovarian failure does not have to define your future. By catching it early, understanding your options and also working closely with your doctor, you can take control of your reproductive health and explore the best course of action for your specific situation. So that's it for the video. Thank you all for watching. If you know someone who is affected by premature ovarian failure or if you yourself are suffering from it, feel free to share your experience in the comments down below. Your story might just help someone else who's going through a similar journey. Don't forget to like and share this video and also subscribe to this channel for more such content on women's reproductive health. And I will see you in the next one.